welcome to the Music Corner. I'm your host, Jonathan Kiyu. Today we're going to be focusing on uh, the guitar. What we're going to do today could focus on the acoustic guitar, or you could play your electric guitar along with us. But this show is one of many shows that's going to help you learn a few new things about your instrument. And if you're already an experienced player, when you hear me speak about uh, today's topic, which is going to be finger picking, it may help you explain it to friends or family members when you try to teach them how to do finger picking on the guitar. We all have someone we know who would love to learn a few tricks on the guitar. And uh, maybe the way I explain it can help you explain it better uh, to friends, family, coworkers who would love to play the guitar the same way you play the guitar. And if you've never done any finger picking before, or if you're a beginner guitar player, then this is the place to be. So stay right here with me. Well, today's topic is finger picking, specifically basic finger picking patterns. When I say basic, I'm not talking about something that is uh, um, that you never use except in the privacy of your own home. I'm talking about basic finger picking patterns that everybody uses uh, and that can become the foundation to more advanced patterns. So uh, I hope you stick with me here and uh, watch what I'm doing here with my right hand because what we're doing is going to help you accompany yourself if you are playing songs and singing along. Uh, it's going to help you accompany others. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to play for a minute uh, just to illustrate uh, the music. One thing I found, I've taught the guitar for over 20 years, and I found that simply hearing what the teacher is talking about goes a long way to getting into your own mind. So let me play a little bit for you. Uh, we'll call this the basic finger picking pattern number one. Okay, not a very poetic name, but let's call it basic finger picking pattern number one. So let's w focus on my right hand. Uh, for the record, I'm going to be playing a, a C major chord with my left hand. Okay. So let's focus on the right hand here. Basic finger picking pattern number one. Here it comes. Now don't worry, I'm going to play it slower too. We're going to spend a few minutes talking about this, but I want to let you hear what it sounds like. Now I'm going to keep the pattern going. I'm going to change chords a little bit. I want to make a little music for you here. Okay, now, everything I just did, you're going to be completely capable of doing that too. It's going to take you a little practice, but everything takes a little bit of practice, right? Okay, so, the basic finger picking pattern. Now, let's talk a little bit about why we're even doing this. First of all, finger picking sounds great on the guitar. Primarily, it's done on the acoustic guitar, but you know, some of the best uh, rock and roll guitar players out there, some people who've made big names for themselves, they happen to play their instrument, electric guitar, rock and roll stuff, with bare fingers. I'm thinking of uh, Mark Knopfler from Dire Straits, doesn't use a, a plastic flat pick. Lindsey Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac, doesn't use a pick. And these are guys who play electric guitar, acoustic guitar, they, they, they do it all. And there's no reason why you can't too, okay? But uh, finger picking is just a beautiful approach to the acoustic guitar, and that's why we're, we're talking about it today. So grab your guitar, hope you've got your guitar handy, okay? Uh, we're gonna be talking about doing repetitive patterns with your playing hand, your right hand here, okay? Because uh, finger picking is a great way to accompany a uh, singer, a great way to accompany another instrument. It's a very intimate sound. Now, I'm gonna be using my bare fingertips. Uh, there are people who actually wear guitar, what they call finger picks and thumb picks, on their fingertips. It's it a great sound. It's a little metallic, it's a little loud, but it's a great sound. Uh, I don't use finger picks for two reasons. Uh, I would have to go and find where I put them. <laughs> and second of all, I don't want that metallic sound, even though I appreciate that it's loud and crisp and some people sound great doing it. I like the intimacy of, of using the flesh for my own fingers. Uh, the fact is all our hands are different. So when you play the finger picking guitar with your own fingers, you sound like you. As soon as you put something on your fingers, you sort of sound like those, those uh, guitar picks. You take away a little bit of your personality. Of course, if uh, you ever see a classical guitar player, someone playing a beautiful nylon string guitar, playing classical music, they never wear finger picks. They, they want that sound of the flesh. And maybe even some of you can grow your fingernails a little bit. It's a very nice sound to have the fingernail and the flesh both plucking the string. Um, but if your fingernails are short like mine, don't even worry about it. Let's stick with your, your bare fingertips. Okay, so finger picking patterns. Um, when I first was learning the guitar, I didn't, I didn't take lessons from a teacher to learn how to finger pick, and I was very intimidated by finger picking. I would hear people do it, I would see people do it live, and uh, it just seemed like, a, like something that you really had to go to music school to learn. It might take a few years to learn how to do any of it. 
and it's intimidating. And I came to find out that there are some specific patterns that uh, aren't intimidating. And once you get those patterns down, a whole new world um, approach, a, a, a whole new world comes up. Quick story, John Lennon from the Beatles uh, was not a finger picker. And uh, later on in his life, he was about 20 years, 28 years old, Donovan, some of you have heard of Donovan, Donovan showed John Lennon how to finger pick. Well, John Lennon, being the songwriter that he was, he immediately took the, the first finger picking rudiments he learned from Donovan and wrote some great songs, including that song, Dear Prudence. A lot of you know that song, Dear Prudence. Well, that was John Lennon's sort of beginning finger picking song. So as you can see, he learned the rudiments, you know, began writing great music right away, and you can too, right? Anybody can do it. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty now, okay? We're not gonna be talking too much about the left hand today. Mainly we're gonna be focusing on the right hand. Um, I'm gonna tell you which chord I'm gonna be grabbing with my left hand, but uh, at first, that's not the important thing. At first, the, what we're really talking about is what the right hand is doing. As we get a little bit more into today's lesson, we will talk about what the left hand chord is because sometimes your right hand has to adjust a little bit to get the best sound from that particular chord. But don't worry about that right now. To start off, let's, um, let's do an easy chord. Let's do an E minor chord. I bet everybody out there knows an E minor chord. And if you don't know how to play E minor, now's the time, okay? So let's focus on the left hand for a second. The E minor chord. With your left hand, you're gonna be using your index and middle fingers. Now, you can use your uh, middle and ring fingers, and that's okay. But using your left hand index and ring is really the way to go. Or index and middle, I should say, is the way to go for today. Um, I've seen people use those two fingers. I've seen people use these two fingers. To be honest with you, for today, it doesn't really matter. The context of the actual song is going to be uh, how you decide. So let's not worry about that too much. So here's what I'm doing. We got the index finger, second fret on the fifth string, middle finger, second fret on the fourth string. Okay, see that right there? And I'm not touching any of the other strings. So that the fat string here is wide open, and the three skinny strings are wide open. Okay? So now let's talk about the, the uh, right hand for a second here. The right hand is going to. Uh, be sort of the bulk of today's lesson, okay? Our right hand finger picking. Now, I want to emphasize something. What you're learning today is a pattern, okay? It's a pattern, meaning repetitive. And music is full of patterns. Don't let the word pattern scare you, okay? Because patterns are a beautiful thing in music. Music is full of patterns. You could say they're, they're almost uh, mathematical patterns. Music is full of patterns. So you got your E minor chord, right? Okay, so let's talk about what the, the right hand is doing. Now, the right hand pattern, I'm going to illustrate, I'm going to play for a second, but then we're going to talk about it. I'm going to play it slow, then medium, then fast. But don't worry, I'm going to come back and talk you through it nice and slowly. Here's the, what we're calling the basic finger picking pattern number one. A little bit faster. Let's slow it down a little bit. Now, if you're like I was when I first started, I would see someone do that kind of finger picking pattern, I couldn't make head or tails of it. You know, it was just, it was too fast, it was, uh, there's too much going on. And uh, we're gonna demystify it very quickly here for you, okay? And again, we're gonna stick with that E minor chord of the left hand just because it's, it's easy to play and it's very listenable. Okay, so let's focus now on the right hand for a second. At the heart of, of what we're doing today, if there's one thing that I want you to take away with you today is this notion that the thumb is going to be alternating between two very specific strings. And you can do that along with me on your guitar with your E minor chord. And notice my thumb is, is in a parallel line with the, uh, with the strings, okay? My fingers are coming up in this direction. That means I have to tilt my wrist a little bit. And a teacher once told me, that the way he explains this is, he pretends that he has a, a pitcher of water in his hand, and he's gonna pour that water in his lap, like that. So you're kind of tilting your wrist a little bit. Thumb in a straight line, fingers coming up like this, okay? Might feel a little bit weird at first, but stick with it. Okay, so back to our pattern. The thumb is doing what they call the alternating thumb. Anybody who pursues finger picking, you're going to have a lifetime of alternating thumb patterns. All different kinds of music, all different uh, 
speeds, all different chords, but your thumb alternating like this, number one, it's a great sound. But number two, guitar players use this all the time. So if you're learning someone else's finger picking song, you're gonna find that many, many of your favorite songs involve alternating thumb, okay, an alternating thumb pattern. Now, there's more going on, obviously, okay? So let's stay with the right hand here. I'm gonna walk you through this pattern. If, if it doesn't sink in right away, don't worry, because we're gonna talk about it for, for a few minutes. And you can always send me an email, okay? Uh, I'll give you the email address right now. The email address is gonna run during the credits as well. I'm gonna give you this email address uh, right now. Uh, send me an email, say, Jonathan, help me out with this. The address is info at corner-music.com. That's info at corner-music.com. My name is Jonathan, I'd be glad to help you out. And that email address will run at the, at the end credits as well, okay? All right, so now let's get back to the right hand here. The pattern goes like this. Thumb on the sixth string, index finger, on the third skinny string, also known as the G string. Thumb on the fourth string, middle finger on the second string. I'm gonna walk you through that again, and then I'll explain to you the logic behind this. Because if you know the logic, if you understand why you're doing something, it makes everything a lot easier. So I'm gonna walk you through the pattern though. Six with your thumb, three with the index, four with the thumb, two with the middle. You could say it's six, three, four, two. Now, I, I watched a lot of students uh, work on this pattern over the years, and uh, you gotta go slowly. No one expects you to master this stuff in a day or even a week, but if you're patient with yourself, uh, you, you'd be surprised how fast you can go. Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about the logic about why we're doing this exact um, pattern with the fingertips. Your thumb is going to be responsible for the three heavy strings. This is sort of an overriding principle, okay? Your thumb is responsible for the three heavy strings. Any song, anything we're doing, just keep that in mind. For our purposes right now, I'm going to call that a hard and fast rule. Anytime you play any of the three fat strings when you're finger picking, you're going to be using your right thumb. If you're a lefty, you're going to be using your left thumb. Your index finger is responsible for one string only, the third skinny string. Middle finger responsible for the second skinny string. And ring finger responsible for the first skinny string. Okay? So you see that logic there? The thumb gets three, and then index, middle, and ring, they each get one. Okay? Now, you want to commit that to memory. I know it seems pretty obvious, but once we get into this, it's easy to get tangled up. Uh, our, our index finger is a tyrant. That's what I think. Our index finger wants to do as much as possible. It wants to take over everything, okay? But it can't. It has to stay on its string, all right? <laughs> the middle finger has its job. Ring finger has its job, okay? And for our purposes today, like I said, we're going to consider this to be carved in stone. Now, of course, there are exceptions, but for today, let's stick with this. Thumb, 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 index, middle, ring, okay? So now let's go back to today's pattern. When I say six, I'm hoping that you remember, well, the thumb, that's the thumb's domain, is six. Remember, six means your sixth string, okay? Six. Next number in our pattern is three. Well, three is the domain of the index. So, so far we have six, three. I'm gonna do it a few times. Do it along with me if you have your guitar. And by the way, if you don't have a guitar, but you've always wanted to play, I'm hoping that uh, a program like this will make you realize that you can do it. Uh, anybody can do it. It takes a little practice, but so does everything, right? But uh, this is not too sophisticated. This takes a little time, you know, good teacher. Okay. So, so far we have six and three, four with the thumb, because remember that's the thumb's domain, right? Four, two, two with the middle finger. Six, three, four, two. You might want to make a mental note of that. Six, three, four, two, six, three, four, two, okay? Thumb, index, thumb, middle. Okay, now I'm going to let the guitar do the talking for a minute here. I'm going to just repeat that pattern for a couple of seconds. I'm going to stay on my E minor chord. Again, basic finger picking pattern, but trust me, as you get more comfortable with this, you're going to find that there are many, many guitar players and songwriters who use this pattern. But I'm going to stick with the E minor chord and just repeat this pattern a few times. So 
So most of my students, I, I've been teaching since about 1992, and uh, most of my students start off at about this speed. And I encourage them to, to stay right at that speed. No reason to go fast. Now what we're talking about here is a physical skill. And uh, it's interesting that the slower you, you practice that physical skill, the quicker your brain absorbs it, the quicker you get into your muscle memory. So if you want to be a great guitar player, practice slowly. I tell my students that all the time. And uh, it's, it can be difficult to rein yourself in. And it takes a lot of patience. Um, it's worth it. It's worth it in the long run. Okay, practice as slowly as you can until you really feel that you know it. Um, I, over the years, I've made my living telling students, practice slowly. If there's two words I say over and over again, practice slowly. Okay, so again, here's the, here's the pattern, nice and slowly. If you have your guitar handy and you've never done this before, do it along with me, but stay right at this nice slow tempo. I'll count, count us into four. One, two, three, four. So far, six, three, four, two. Six, three, four, two. Remember, six and four are going to be with the thumb, three with the index, two with the middle finger. So let's do a quick recap of what we've been talking about so far. We're talking about finger picking as being a great approach to accompanying a song, right? To accompany a singer, to accompany a, an instrument. Um, finger picking, by its very nature, is relatively soft. So obviously, there's going to be some context where finger picking just is not going to work. Right, a loud, you know, extremely loud rock concert um, with a lot of other instruments going on doesn't work quite so well. An intimate setting, you know, comfort of your own home, you know, a nice quiet restaurant, someone doing some finger picking sounds beautiful. There's nothing that sounds better than that, you know. Okay, so so finger picking, beautiful approach to playing the guitar. Anybody can do it. It looks intimidating, doesn't have to be intimidating. Okay, finger picking uh, when you start off is full of patterns, and today we're talking about what I would consider to be the most basic. Um, but the mo one of the most useful patterns, okay, so finger picking patterns. At the heart of today's pattern, and many, many patterns, is the idea of alternating thumb. Remember I said that before, the alternating thumb, right? In this case, the thumb is alternating between the sixth string and the fourth string. Six and four. And as you get more advanced on, uh, on finger picking, you'll find that you'll still be doing alternating with the thumb, but these other fingers will be doing fancier and fancier things. But at the heart of it, you hear that six and four. Not for every finger-picking song ever in, in history, um, but for more songs than you'd think have that alternating thumb back and forth. Okay, so we talked about orienting your right hand with your thumb responsible for the three fattest strings, your index, middle, and ring each getting a string. Now, you experienced finger-pickers out there, you know there's exceptions to this, and there are many, many great, beautiful musical reasons to break away from this pattern. But today we're going to act as if this is carved in stone. Thumb on the three heavy strings, index, middle, and ring. And when I say the thumb on the three heavy strings, what I'm really saying is if you're asked to play one of those three heavy strings, it's your thumb's responsibility, okay? Thumb, thumb, thumb. That's its domain, its responsibility. Index only has one responsibility, the G string, the third string, middle on the second string, ring on the first string. I think you get the idea. Okay. So if you have that firmly in your head, we're going to alter the pattern a little bit. What we did a minute ago was six, three, four, two. Okay, thumb, index, thumb, middle. Now we're going to alter it. Now I'm not doing this to uh, to challenge you necessarily, although it will be a little bit of a challenge. I'm doing this because there are lots of other chords out there besides the E minor chord, right? So on some chords, that six, three, four, two pattern sounds great. I'm going to play for you a second here. Long story short, if the chord you're playing has an E in the name or a G in the name, E major, uh, G7, G, E minor, if it has an E and G in the name, we're going to stick with this pattern, which is 6, 4, 3, 2. Okay, I'm going to do it on a G chord. In fact, I'm going to play for a second here doing uh, G and E minor back and forth. Here's G. And here's E minor. Sounds nice, right? Anybody can do this. Okay, 
but many other chords, we actually don't want that sixth string in the mix. Either it's not harmonious or it's not the strongest possible sound. So bear with me for a second here. I'm about to shake things up. Let's go to a, a, another nice chord, the A minor chord. Okay, A minor. Take one second, focus on the left hand for a second here, the A minor chord. Now with the A minor chord here, we're focusing on uh, the second, third, and fourth strings. Now those of you who already know how to play A minor, now's a chance to stretch your legs, you know, have a potato chip. Come back to us in about 30 seconds, okay? The A minor chord. Index finger, second string, first fret. Ring finger, third string, second fret. Middle finger, fourth string, second fret. Index, ring, and middle. Now, if you're still working on your, on your left hand chords, on your, your uh, chords over here, keep working on them. Those chords are going to open up so many opportunities for you. They can be frustrating. Some of them are easy, some of them are hard. It's worth the effort. You learn about 15 or 20 different open position chords. You can make so much beautiful music, all kinds of music. So this is my uh, brief interlude here talking about, uh, I'm going to give you a little pep talk about chords. Uh, 15 or 20 chords, the, the basic majors and minors, seventh chords have a great bluesy sound. All the work you put into those chords pay off. All that work pays off, okay? They can be frustrating, a couple of them, no doubt about it. But even if you learn, you know, 10 chords, you'd be surprised how a lifetime of music awaits you, all different kinds of music, rock, blues, folk, country, Beatles, tunes, you name it. Okay, let's go back to the right hand. I'm going to stay in my A minor, though, but let's talk about the right hand. Quick little adjustment here on our right hand. No longer on the sixth string. Okay, our pattern is now, are you ready for this? Five, three, four, two. Five, three, four, two, okay? We're changing only the very first thumb stroke. Other than that, everything else is the exact same. So how hard could it be, right? You can do this. Five, three, four, two. I'm gonna do it in slow motion. Remember, five and four, the thumb's responsibility. Three is the index, two is the middle finger. Just so it happens today, the ring finger is getting a, a free pass, okay? Okay, here's the pattern. Five, four, three, two on, uh, on sorry, five, three, Four, two on the A minor chord five three four two five three four two five now my advice especially if you're doing this for the first time don't worry about going faster than that think about getting a nice clear tone Think about uh, how steady you are. If you want to really discipline yourself, get a metronome going at that tempo. Maybe that's about 60 beats per minute. And see if you can get that pattern going with a metronome. If it feels easy, crank up that metronome a little bit, okay? All, what we're doing now is laying the groundwork for, for seriously a lifetime worth of guitar playing ahead of you, okay? So imagine if this pattern we're talking about today, if it takes you a month to, uh, to master and to feel good about, well, hopefully you've got many, 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 many guitar playing years ahead of you to use this pattern, and you will, okay? So it's worth, it's worth it, it's worth the effort. Okay, so again, A minor with the left hand, right hand, five, three, four, two. So this five, three, four, two pattern, when are you gonna use this pattern? Many, many other chords that you might be playing down here with your left hand. Uh, uh, any chord with C in the name, any chord with A in the name, any chord with D in the name, uh, you know, um, an F chord, depending on how you play F, you could use the pattern like this. A lot of possibilities. So for our purposes right now, we have two patterns. The very first one we did, six, three, four, two. And I told you any chord with E in the name or G in the name, you've got your six, three, four, two. Okay? A lot of numbers. I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you. Okay? But we're going to review it real quick almost any other chord that you're going to be playing, your typical major and minor chords, you know, uh, C, D, A, A minor, okay, C7, you're going to do the 5, 3, 4, 2 pattern. Okay, now remember, we're only changing the very first thumb stroke with the right hand here, okay? Don't let these numbers freak you out. So let's do a quick uh, illustration. I'm going to play for a couple seconds on the E minor chord, and then if you watch closely, I'm going to 
play for a few seconds on the A minor. I'm going to go right into the A minor without stopping. And you notice my thumb is going to make that slight adjustment in the pattern from 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. We talked about alternating thumb, 6-4, six, 6-4. Four, six, four. All of a sudden, I'm going to change the A minor, and it's going to be going 5-4, five, 5-4. Four, five, four. You know, it's subtle, it sounds great. And, and frankly, in most cases, you don't have a choice. You've got to make that little adjustment on the thumb because the fat string, like I said, either sounds bad, like on a D chord, you can't hit the fat string, or in some cases, it just doesn't sound, it doesn't help the chord as much as it could. Okay, so here comes the E minor, 6, 3, 4, 2. I'm going to keep it nice and, uh, nice and slow here. Let's focus in on the right hand. Here's my E minor. Now watch as I change the A minor. Here it comes. Two, three, here I go. Does that sound good? Here comes back the E minor. Okay, now again, you may have a couple of questions about this, uh, and I'm happy to talk to you or send you an email. Uh, the email address, you know, it'll run during the credits, but I'll give it to you right now. Info at corner-music.com. Info at corner-music.com. My name is Jonathan Keyu. Be happy to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, give me some feedback. And, uh, and if you have any questions about this, I'd love to hear from you. And it makes me a better teacher. Your questions make me a better teacher. I've taught guitar uh, since 1992, and uh, I've had some great questions over the years. And... Uh, I lost track of how many students I've taught. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about basic finger picking. Now, don't make the mistake I made. I want you to learn from my mistakes. The first time I ever tried finger picking, I did it. I did it very slowly, and it wasn't satisfying. I, it didn't sound like music to me. It just sounded like plucking guitar strings. What I didn't know then, which I know now, is that you've got to stick with it and go faster, and it becomes more musical as you go faster. So now, before we wrap up today's show, I'm going to play a little bit for you. I'm just going to make up a tune here, using typical chords, G and C and A minor, and all that kind of stuff. As you hear me do it faster, that's my way of, of motivating you to stick with these patterns, which are going to be slow at first, but they're going to sound more and more musical. Don't give up on yourself. Keep the, those fingers flowing. Okay, here it comes. So everything I just played right there was either the 6-3-4-2 pattern, when I did a G or an E minor, or the 5-3-4-2 pattern when I did the C, or the A minor, okay? I think those are the only chords I just used there, G, E minor, C, and A minor. I think there's a D in there. Okay, so hope these patterns become part of your practicing. If you already know how to play these patterns, uh, this might help you, teacher, friends, and family. I'm going to see you again next time here in the Music Corner. I'm going to play us out a little bit here. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.